Does the Earth have an expiration date? It's hard to say, but the truth is that right now, tomorrow, or in a few months, a serious environmental crime will take place somewhere on the planet. Degradation is undeniable. Every year, 94 million hectares of forest disappear, about 5 million soccer fields. Also every year, the climate change and water shortages, among other disasters, will cause the loss of 10,000 to 50,000 species. A third of the world's rivers are polluted, and as a consequence, 29% of the riverine fauna and half of the continental fish are threatened. Scientists predict a possible mass extinction. It will be the sixth major extinction in the broadest sense, and the first since the disappearance of dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Opposite to this distressing picture, in the developed and densely populated Europe, there are still wild havens, places where the renewal of the biological life cycle is guaranteed. Extremadura is larger than Holland, Belgium or Denmark. It is located in the south of Europe, in the Iberian Peninsula. It is a region of contrasts, where 2,400 meter mountaintops blend with landscapes so diverse as the meadow, the Mediterranean forest, fertile valleys, wetlands, and never-ending plains. This land is the ideal place to contemplate nature's daily rhythm. The game of life has a wonderful dramatic quality and reflects a basic natural law to live or to die, to eat or to be eaten, a concept neither primitive nor cruel. It is good from a realistic viewpoint because it serves life itself, a life that begins at ground level where insects exploit plants, the primary producers in the food chain. Oil beetles, loud crickets rubbing tirelessly their wings to attract females, and insatiable caterpillars seek protection in the plant substrate to avoid predators and to eat the leaves. An odd body and a repetitive obsession describe the mole cricket. It is a multi-terrain digger making seven-meter tunnels in one night to grind the roots of the plants. Insects are a plague. They cause devastation. Spiders are there to prevent it. They only have to wait for someone to fall into their deadly trap to immobilize it afterwards with the resistant fabric secreted, by instance, by the members of the fearsome family of the garden spiders. After its industrious packing, this ruthless executioner 
carries its reward and sucks out the internal fluids of the victim, suffocated in a silk coffin. We are before a killer. It looks harmless. Suddenly, it grabs the dragonfly with its legs and kills it without mercy. These are the rules of the game for the crab spider. Success also characterizes the centipede. It is fast thanks to its 20 legs and it has two poisonous claws in its mouth. Actually, this venom causes a pain similar to a wasp sting that does not have very much effect in its main enemy, the jeweled lizard. When these two rivals come face to face, the battle only lasts seconds and has a resounding end. The warrior that feeds on primary invertebrates is the winner. Certainly, to win or to die holds true a fact that no venom can change. This worm-looking reptile is the Iberian worm lizard. It loves dampness and hates the light. And to escape, it burrows under the ground blindly since its eyes are useless. Now it is running away because it has detected a Moorish gecko. Its adhesive toe pads allow it to walk on vertical surfaces, to stick to ceilings like a suction pad and to grab fragile moths. Some insects prefer heights, and trees are very useful for the largest European beetle, the stag beetle. The males have antlers used for courtship and as a defensive weapon to wrestle its fellow males. The caterpillars also climb to the branches. They feed on plant matter, a devastating habit benefiting the most common plague of pine trees, the processionary caterpillar. Right after they are born, these voracious destroyers bite the pine leaves in which they were born, and when the leaves are dry, they move on to a new tree to continue their destructive behavior. But nature is wise and provides the tools to resolve these invasions. Good examples are the finches and starlings. These two birds feel attracted to worms which they feed to their chicks. This is how two prime natural laws get resolved. The maintenance of the offspring and the control of environmental destroyers, some as numerous as the termites. In their colonies, grow and live more than one million individuals. But fortunately, the woodpecker is in charge of keeping them under control. Insects are the most diverse family on Earth. There are over 900,000 different species, more than all the other group of animals together. They have been colonizing the planet for 400 million years. Without them, pollination could not be possible and plants which provide food for the herbivores would not propagate. Without plant spreading, 
the long-tailed field mice, closely connected to wild fruits, would not exist. Neither would the squirrels, which so much depend on pine cones. And without plants, species that already lived in Europe a hundred thousand years ago, like rabbits and hares, would not have endured. The evolutionary process would have been broken and nothing and no one would have survived. That is the reason it is so important the role insects play in the global context of nature. Thanks to them, biodiversity has been and is guaranteed. Without them, the food pyramid would be a fragile card castle, unable to guarantee animal evolution. There is always danger. The skillful survive. The one lacking ability will not eat. Whenever the ladder snake shows up, the outcome is evident. The end of the garden dormouse is near. There is no way out. The die is cast. Distress seizes the rodent. The reptile moves forward. But sometimes, predictions do not come true. Surprisingly, the dormouse escapes from a certain death although it is a few millimeters away from one of the most experienced trackers of the forest. Snakes are hunters, but also become prey for other animals. In this case, it is the European polecat who tries to kill it without success. The terrible carnivores burst into the game of life. Uncertainty is a constant, and mice have the ability to get into trouble. They complicate their lives accidentally, it is a mistake to get out now. The genet is on guard, and it never fails. Its patience is endless. Armed with courage, the mouse faces up to it. And inevitably, the genet does away with it without mercy. The fox is another of those forest strays that never gives up. Its capability to feed on anything makes its adaptation easier. It depends on rabbits, but when they are scarce, it has no choice but to jump on rodents, since it needs half a kilogram of food per day. The Egyptian mongoose attacks. The rats have no future. Just in a few seconds, the relentless pursuit gets resolved. And after the quick fight, it hides to enjoy its conquest. Related to the mongoose, this furious hunter is one of the animals included in the Bern Convention, whose goal is to protect the European wildlife and natural habitats. The most important group of herbivorous animals is the ruminants. First, they pull the plants with their incisors and swallow them. Then, they regurgitate the food to the mouth, chew it and return it to the stomach to complete the digestion. Cervids like fallow deer, roe deer or red deer live in family groups and the herds move from one place to another led by the dominant adult female. Only the stags have antlers, a weapon that grows and is shed every year until it reaches its maximum growth when they are 10 years old. This is the home of the Spanish ibex, owner of the inaccessible slopes. 
The adult males show off beautiful horns and some weigh up to 120 kilograms. Unlike deer, the ibex preserves its horns all its life. And these are the masters of the bush, the wild boar. Its thick coat acts as a shield from the harsh winter, and its bad sight gets compensated by its keen sense of smell. They are the first ones to detect the wolf, a dethroned king. Fires and reforestations destroy their refuges in the bushes. But what really produces tragic consequences is the decrease of livestock grazing. Without cattle, the wolves become indiscriminate looters. They are killing machines, unscrupulous bandits. Instinct turns them into gladiators of survival and they risk their lives every day in the turbulent world of the terrestrial mammals. To discover the world's heaviest bird capable of flight, we have to leave the mountain and come down to the fertile farmlands. From a close view, the stout feet, hanging head bristles and enormous size 18 kilograms and a meter high, give away the great bustard. They travel in small flocks and do not take off until they sense danger, although in the air they can exceed 80 kilometers per hour. The cranes also move forward vigorously. They are tireless travelers crossing this continent every year at 4,000 meter heights. They arrive in Extremadura in the fall, searching for acorns. At dawn, the flocks spread around the home oaks. They eat until sunset and simultaneously give out a sharp trumpet sound that can be heard five kilometers away. The azure-winged magpie a black-hooded crow can be seen in two specific areas, Spain and Portugal, and 8,000 kilometers away in East Asia. The crossbill is a more common bird. It is a bird a bit bigger than a sparrow, with a very practical speciality. Due to its total dependence on pine cones, with its crossed bill twists the hard framework of scales like pliers, and extracts the tender seeds. Huge and small birds share peacefully their possessions. This simplifies the daily life of pigeons. Thousands of them land on the oak grove to stuff themselves with acorns, like cranes do. They swallow them whole, and when they are satisfied, they rest without lowering their guard because one of their many predators is near. It is a solitary and shy hunter that feeds mainly on rodents, although it is also inclined to eat wood pigeons. When the wildcat sees a pigeon, it runs and climbs the trees with a feline skill. It hides like a ghost. It does not let the prey out of its sight. One can sense the tension. At the end, it pounces on it like an arrow. It is a crack shot with a regular 95% accuracy rate. The claws are ready. The eyes are calculating the distance. The goshawk just has to wait for its prey to reveal itself. 
At the right moment, it leaves its vigilance, and before the victim notices anything, the goshawk will be on top of it. There is no time for reaction. Never. Within the birds of prey group, the pilgrim falcon is the master of the surprise attack. Quick and precise, its body is well built for this hunting technique. Its size and strength allow it to capture mid-sized species, and its long tail is an efficient rudder to make sudden turns when it is dedicated to reap the life of birds in the open. The pilgrim has no rivals. It is a genuine pirate. Whether it is a black kite, a booted eagle or a golden eagle, the vital game of survival is a ruthless reality for the birds of prey. The static flapping and the attacks of the lesser kestrel are unbearable for the voles. As well as the pressure placed on the grasshoppers by the common kestrel. One can never underestimate the most popular of the European falcons. Its claws are like daggers and its eyes can see everything. The same dramatic sequence always repeats itself. Without this natural selection, the kestrel, the grasshopper, the cricket, the scops owl or the ill-fated cicada would not continue populating the earth. When it comes to eating, the eagle's preferences are diverse. The booted eagle chooses mid-sized birds, like the woodchat shrike that it is plucking at right now, a bird a little bit bigger than the nightingale. However, the short-toed eagle prefers snakes. These make up 95% of their diet and it looks horrifying to see them swallowing them whole. They can be up to two meters long. To fatten her only chick, the female will also choose prey of great consistency. The Montague's Harrier flies low. Its reduced size does not stop it from catching rabbits, the key mammal for the raptors. Environmental disasters like myxomatosis interrupt the control role that eagles play naturally. This forces them to hunt rodents. In the Iberian Peninsula reside 99% of the world's population of the imperial eagle. That is the reason why Spain is the maximum responsible for their survival. More comforting is the future of the golden eagle a stable species capable of replicating the dramatic plunges of the falcons. Thanks to the thermal currents, the vultures rise up to 6,000 meters and when they set foot on the ground, they stage the most hair-raising show of nature. They are the super predators of all ecosystems. The fierce carrion feast begins in Montfrag. Fights follow in the midst of an avalanche of 200 frenzied birds. Aggression and appetite set for eating turns. The Egyptian vultures have to wait. They will come into action when the omnipotent beaks of the vultures open up the animal's carcass. Soon the remains of the sheep will disappear. Away from the agitation, the shy Egyptian vultures decide to go looking for their own trophy. In Europe, the griffon vulture lives in the Mediterranean area, but its biggest population is found in Spain, 
where there are close to 20,000 pairs in comparison to the 1,500 pairs of black vultures. Its share in the game of life is crucial and that is the reason they have been called the health patrols of nature. When they wander in the sky, death is suspected on the ground. In the mountaintops, we find the secret of the freshwater-dependent ecosystems. Even though Europe has suffered a 20% decrease in snowfalls in the past 50 years, the melted water of the Extremadura mountains ensures the periodic increase of the hydrographic basins of the Tagus and Guadiana rivers. Water flows along the very old quaternary glacier valleys, forming amazing river basins and waterfalls, some of them with spectacular falls as high as 30 meters. The crystal clear streams flow between a tangle of alder, ash, and willow trees dampening on its way the dense gallery forests. This land is one of the most diverse inland regions of Europe. It has the greatest riverbanks and is among the first in number of lakes and gorges. It has more than 1500 kilometers of inland coast and it adds up to 48 reservoirs. It has a water universe of 23,000 hectares that makes up a permanent food pantry for countless animals. It is obvious that here, wildlife preservation and dynamism are always guaranteed. As on land, there are moving battles also taking place underwater. Also, here life is always at stake. One of the most exotic inhabitants is the caddis worm. It is the larva of an insect called Trichoptera that moves around protected by a burden of leaves and small stones to avoid being dragged by the currents. The larva of the stonefly and the mayfly also glide along the aquatic bottom. Two good pollution indicators since they cannot withstand the impurities of the waters. Nobody is safer when the water beetle brings its two small hairs to get oxygen from the surface. It is the horrific larva of the diving beetle, a vicious predator only six centimeters big that sows panic underwater. The agitation clouds the bottom. We can only guess the massacre taking place. First, it is a worm. And then a tadpole. Little by little, all die strangled by this cruel monster. With such an unsafe sight, the metamorphosis of the stonefly occurs just in time. It will be able to escape from its dangerous neighbor. The stonefly climbs lazily through a reed to get out of the water and slowly detaches itself from its shell. Once the process is completed, it will spend at least three hours of its life in the air competing with thousands of males to inseminate females. The rivers are responsible to a large extent for the maintenance of life because they continuously renew the food reserves. The common blackbird, the guard of the muddy riverbanks, 
will have plenty of opportunities to stuff itself with earthworms. The white-throated dipper, more intrepid than the blackbird, practices diving courageously to fish insects. Its dives are brief, but it can stay submerged for 30 seconds, withstanding a thrust of 4,500 litres per minute. While walking, it bends the body on the legs, a gesture also made by the chicks when they are hungry and wait for their mother. The marbled newt goes deep into the vegetation and only comes out on very few occasions. Its long flat tail, equal or even larger than the head and body together, is the body feature that differentiates it from frogs and toads, the other amphibians that do not have tail. While hunting, it creates small currents with its mouth to absorb the preys that are closer by. It is a trick that gives good results with the stonefly. The Spanish ribbed newt does not flee like this Bosca's newt. It is the second largest amphibian in Europe and it is a strange defense mechanism. It shrinks its abdomen and its ribs go through the skin becoming poisonous thorns. The young and defenseless Iberian frog is more vulnerable. It needs to be quick with the hesitant pill bug before some perverse bird notices it and becomes the prey itself. If it wants to live to be 10 years old, the age that the small Mediterranean tree frog can reach, it should blend with the reeds and jump only if it's in danger. Its cry attracts snakes and nocturnal raptors. The tadpole shrimp are completely different to anything that moves in fresh water. The most striking feature of these prehistoric crustaceans is the shield that protects their backs and also that they may eat each other. They are cannibals. The red swamp crayfish is an agitator, a potential criminal, since it is responsible for the death of the native crawfish in the European rivers. When it needs air, it rises to the surface and pulls out half of its shell to get oxygen into the gills. But now this threatening attitude has nothing to do with breathing. It is due to the presence of the American mink. Even snapping its pincers, the mammal will pull it off from the water and it will end up destroying it as if it was paper. The trout, from the same family as the salmon, needs cold and very clean rivers. Its strong fins assist in the brisk movements and abrupt turns. When the young fish are born, they will remain in the small rivers where they came to exist, and when they grow up, they will migrate to deeper waters. There is a great difference in size between the trout and the Spanish minnow, which is only 10 centimeters long. Like the spined loach, they are species of special interest because they are endangered. The 
Siberian barbel is hardier, but they are all females, so to reproduce, they need the sperm of a different fish, the Iberian chub. The eel also has a difficult time, because the river dams prevent the young eels, the famous elva, from flowing freely. The hefty black bass can afford to be still. It does not move. It is like a statue. But its immobility is deceptive. In a thousandth of a second, it can become an unstoppable rascal that will go after, for instance, the three-spined stickleback, a small fish that instead of scales has a thin bone sheet on each side. It will also go after the freshwater blenny, whose fins look like legs, used as support to walk on the bottom of the rivers. The black bass will also chase after the barbel, very abundant in the mid-course of the rivers. All of them are sentenced to die before the otter, an underwater torpedo that will make their lives miserable. The devastating mouth is crucial to the otter since it's 100% carnivore. As a general rule, it hunts sick or handicapped specimens, thus allowing the survival of the fittest. The fact that otters and minks can swim is a serious disadvantage to the fish. The fox, on the other hand, is a land explorer and will travel long distances to obtain an aquatic trophy. Fish are also hit hard by some birds. The kingfisher does not miss a hit. Its attacks last a quarter of a second. It goes back and forth without a stop. Its hits are endless and it is a highly ambitious looter. The great swamps and the wide river stretches are the areas where a scout exercises its power being satisfied with the easy prey. It is a raptor that flies around hoping to find some dying fish floating on the water. If it gets lucky, the black kite will carry the prey on its claws and eat it in the air. This is opportunism at its best, and the kites are experts at taking advantage of nature's chances. The grey heron goes directly to the point, to slaughter without remorse. Even if it does get tiring, soaring up with its nearly two meter long wings wet. Reservoirs like La Serena, one of the largest in Europe, favor the settlement of the cormorant. This bird can submerge down to 10 meters deep to pull out large fish. Its presence is alarming to the marine life because every day it wolves down the equivalent of its weight in fish, about three kilograms. It is noteworthy the pressure that the whiskered terns exercise on the eel. And the routine walks of the egret are also evil. It walks slowly with its beak facing down until it deals a deadly blow. Before swallowing the fish, it shakes it to finish it off and it makes sure the head goes down first to avoid choking.
Water does not last forever. The rivers, the swamps, the ponds and the wetlands get smaller or dry up, even though they seem boundless. This means that its inhabitants, reptiles, amphibians or fish will evaporate and as a result, food will become scarce for a variety of birds and mammals. Fortunately, the droughts are not endless either. When the fall arrives, the biological cycle gets renewed thanks to the magical drops of water. Then life reawakens with a heartbreaking force. It is then that a new crucial phase of the game of life, the animal courtship, takes place. The bellowing of the king of the forest overcomes the meadows. It is the raw call during the rut, the passionate ball of the deer, when the impressive males intone their thunderous love concert. The purpose is to claim their territory and to group the harems. The most forceful will pair off better, since the females prefer the ones that are louder. After the display of passion, the most difficult part begins. The clash between the suitors, in a fight that will only be a show of authority and strength. The antlers get mangled and crash violently. The warlike courage reverberates in the air but nobody gets injured. The terrible confrontation is just aimed to humiliate the opponent, although sometimes the fighters get stuck together and die, unable to separate themselves. The wild reproductive instinct is the best well-expressed display of the natural pride, and it is in the Sierra de Gredos, amidst cork and home oaks, where it achieves its purest state. In the air, the marsh harriers cease their hunting over the reed bed to carry out their courtship dance. Their pirouettes are a very exciting sight. The male displays confirm what these air acrobats are capable of doing for love. The dates of the great crested grebe are less flamboyant. They face each other with the neck stuck up and make their decorative head feathers stand on end. Ostentatious rituals are fostered in the famous circling displays of the great bustard. The males shake their wings, open up their tails over their backs and turn completely white. The females will choose the most convincing one. No other event in the life of the great bustards is more important than the marital flirting. From now on, this couple will be inseparable. And, as it is typical of the otters, they will frolic playfully in the water. Very close by, the polecats repair their sets over the bed of a stream. Although the polecat is a lonely animal, when it is in heat, it becomes very sociable and establishes with the female a relationship of complicity. Together, they fit out their home, where they will have their annual litter. The long-tailed tit collects feathers to decorate the interior of its nest. After a month's work, the bowl-shaped nest, lined with lichen, will be a small fort attached to the tree, with just one entrance and completely blended with the branches. One of the most original architects of nature 
is the tiny pendulum tit. It picks up traces of straw to weave a hanging basket capable of withstanding winds of 80 kilometers per hour. The female griffin vulture is already hatching its chicks. The male does not stray far. The chambers of the vulture are made with plant matter and that is why they make continuous trips to bushy areas where they pick the needed branches to make their bedding niche stronger. This can easily be up to two meters wide. The polecat's technique with its mate consists on a relentless harassment, biting and dragging her around. The possessive male will not allow its conquest to escape from the nuptial kidnapping. The suffocating, pushing and shoving staged by the male magpies is one of the loudest and most hectic copulations of the oak grove. The wolves follow a strict guideline. Only the alpha pair, the dominant individuals of each sex, will reproduce. The blue damselfly has been doing the same thing for millions of years. The female will arch its back to couple with the male while he will hold her head. The dragonflies jump staggering over the surface to hunt mosquitoes. It does not seem possible that they can get to speeds of 85 kilometers per hour. During incubation, the female great crested grebe will not be safe from the overwhelming abuse of the male. The white stalks copulation is based on juggling, balancing acts made more pleasant by the clappering of their bills. And in the quiet of the night, the common tree frogs seek protection to perform the so-called auxiliary amplexus. The embrace of the natterjack toads lasts a few hours and after the hug the female lays a string of 10,000 eggs that will have to develop quickly because of the arrival of the yearly droughts. An unavoidable ordeal that will also affect the quiet midwife toad. With the new births the magical circle of life will close down and be completed. They are without a doubt the peak of the process of the biological renewal. Before the weaning, the wild sow takes her piglets for a walk. It is the time for learning, a delicate time for the swine that try to imitate their mothers jumping around horrifying crags. The family means of support is a job that will fall onto the female Bonelli's eagle, an effort that works well for the raptors. Every year, between one and three peregrine falcons per nest will survive, what ensures the continuity of a bird present in almost all continents. The black vultures are very maternal, protecting the future emperor of the air from the sun with her enormous wings. This is one of the 60 female black storks of Monfrag that sometimes also receives a visit from the grey heron before it leaves for its nest.
There, four slender chicks will wait for their mother. A lot more cautious than these other hungry, wretched creatures that anxiously introduce their bills to the entrails of their mother. Maternity is very hard for the cattle egret. At least it will not have to withstand the grotesque look of the offspring of the black-crowned heron. A bird that seems to be disturbed by the bird sanctuaries where thousands of herons share each millimeter of the trees. The black-winged stilt has arrived to the finish line. And with it, all the other animals that during a long year have had just two goals. To survive and to sow the land, sky and waters with new generations. The black coot and the mouse show off their plentiful descendants. And this is in short, the fundamental secret that drives and always keeps active the heart-pounding game of life.